Uh, use the position modeling, FPM, which is a additive uh, layered manufacturing technology. A uh, simple technology overview, as you can see in this uh, diagram, is that the tip, uh, the, the, the technology uses a, a machine or a head, right? And the head has two different uh, tips, as you see here. And one of them deposits uh, model material, which is this, this side. And the other one deposits uh, support material, which is in this side. And then the FDM head has a dual liquefier, so the filament comes in and uh, and goes into the machine and then gets liquefied. So there, the, with this technology, like I said, we went over in class, there's two different types of, uh, of uh, technologies. Technologies that use support and technologies that don't use support, that might be self-supporting. Uh, for FDM, you do use support, and then you have two types of support. You have the breakaway support system, which uh, breaks, creates a part with the support, and then once it finishes, you just completely break it off. And then you have the other one that it's water works, soluble to release, which is what uh, you put in an ultronic tank, and it'll completely dissolve. Okay? Uh, the machine that we're going to be focusing on today is a uh, fuse position modeling, the FDM 3000, as you guys see in this site. So uh, some of the machine capabilities is that it can build a part. The, the building envelope is 10 inches by 10 inches by 16 inches. So as you can see, MX 10 inches and Y 10 inches and Z 10 inches. Right? Uh, it has a slice resolution depending on the toolpath height, depending on the nozzle tip that you use. Uh, it can build uh, 7,000s, 10,000s, or 14,000 14, uh, build layer thicknesses, right? And there has some material. The material available for this older generation technology is uh, waterworks. No, sorry, uh, wax, which is an investment in casting wax that is used for uh, lost wax process. And also, it has the capability to use uh, P400, which is ABS plastic. And also an, AB, an ABSI, which is high impact plastic, that is also um, that it can also be autoplaned, so you can take it into surgery. And another another material that it can use is E20, which is an elastomer. Uh, this was used uh, previously to make gaskets, uh, so it's a rubbery material. Like I said before, that it has two different types of plastics. Uh, the APS, this, this is a tough plastic that is, uh, the, the name is Acrylithrol Utility, whatever, base material which uh, produces sturdy prototypes, right? Uh, it allows you to make models much more similar to the desired final product part. You know, like we said about other materials, they use uh, uh, materials that continue cross linking, changing properties. Uh, this material, which is a thermal plastic, it doesn't. And then you also have the ABSI plastic, which was uh, the high grade, high impact strength, uh, stronger, and it's also, like I told you, it meets FDA USP class six requirements. Uh, and it can be gamma sterilized, you know? So that, that's what's kind of cool about that plastic. We also said that you have the breakaway support material. Breakaway uh, support that detaches by removing it just uh, once it comes out of the machine, you just break it off. And then the other will support that you have or that is the water work soluble release. So once it creates it, you just put it in a dioxide tank and then it'll completely dissolve. And that has to do with high temperature water and the solvent. So the FDM machine that you see here has a, a couple of uh, main uh, parts. Uh, you see you have a building chamber, which I gave you the dimensions, 10 by 10 by 13, uh, by 18, sorry. And then also you have uh, a C-axis controller here that moves uh, the, the X-axis controller that moves it in X direction, and then another one in Y direction, and then you have the Z Z axis that moves the platform up and down. So it'll steer you have the head, and it'll just build in this part, and it'll start going down by uh, by the slice distance. And then also you have the build, you know, you have the build chamber like I said before. And then using this technology, if you still continue using this technology, even though it might be a little bit old, uh, it was, this one was built in 2001. Uh, the advantage of this is that it can, uh, it's not a closed system, so you can do, you can run other materials, you know, advanced materials for research, but these are ones that are commercially available. 
And the way that you do that is because these are open and you can actually control the temperature that, uh, that you set it. So in order to use this, uh, I'll show you a demonstration of a calibration. You have the display, you have the display uh, pad that lets you load the material. You press it and it'll load it. Uh, you have the unload, you have the flow percent controller, you have the model support to switch back uh, and back and forth, and then also you have the auto shutoff button. You have the auto shutoff, so once the part finishes, it'll completely auto shut off. So that's in the display as you guys can see here. So other other uh, parts in the, the machine are the model temperature control, the support model temperature control, and the bulk, uh, envelope temperature control. So what's cool about this technology is that you can set everything, like you know that the head uh, has a liquefier, so you can control the tips by changing uh, the model tip. This is how you program the, the temperature. Uh, the support tip, you just move it up and down. And then also the envelope, in order for it to have a uniform build, the envelope temperature needs to be constant. So that's how you move around with the envelope temperature. And then over here on the side, guys, you have the jogging option. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, you can move it to the side. You can move the head. You can also move it up and down with the table. And then you have to uh, see the middle. You have the ZEZ -Z controller, so if you press the Z, it'll activate the Z, uh, Z motion. And then you also have the rapid movement, so if you press the, the, the middle button and press the sides, it'll do like a rapid jog. And if it's not pressed, you can, it'll do a slow, slow movement. Uh, like I said before, you have different you have tips. You have the model temperature, the support temperature, and the envelope temperature. Uh, and those change for all the different tips, as you can see in this presentation. If you use ABS uh, with a uh, soluble support, you can use a tip 10, tip 12, or tip 16, and right now we'll get into more of a little bit of tips. But then you also have to reset the temperature. If you use a tip 10, you have to use a 290 uh, Celsius model temperature. And you, you have to use, uh, you're not available to use a waterworks. Uh, waterworks material temperature. But you see you send it to 270, you use a T12, you set the model temperature to 270, and the waterworks support material uh, is 235. And if you're not going to use waterworks soluble support, just the breakaway support, see, you have to use, uh, uh, once again, it's T12, APS, 270, but you use a uh, support temperature of 265. Right, and then you can actually kind of see uh, for uh, for the wax, you can only use uh, T16s. Right, for the elastomer, you can only use T16s. Right, but if you start looking at uh, the ABSI, once again, you can use 10, 12,000, and 16,000 tips. So you can kind of study over this table a little bit, but just 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 remember that it all depends on the temperature, on the tip that you're going to be using, the material you're going to be using, on the combination, and it shows you what model temperature or what support temperature and envelope temperature you have to use. All right, so that's very important. Especially in the, for the, for the ABS, you have to just remember about the, the only tip, the only tips that you have available to use. And then uh, water work in the, in the wax, sorry, you can only use T16s and also in the elastomer, you can only use T16s. So like I told you guys already about the rapid uh, jog, you know, for rapid rapid movement button and the Z height movement, you know, this is to actually move it manually. Especially for when you're doing a calibration, we'll go through a fast calibration right now, you'll have to be able to set the, the tip right at the starting point. So we start looking at the, the heads, guys, which is a, the FDM head in more detail, right? Uh, here you have the FDM head of the FDM 3000. You have uh, the filament, where the filament goes. You have the liquefiers, guys, as you can see here, the liquefiers with the heating coils that heat 